start or do you want me to start? Now we're in Black History Month, we always think about the, the history that has led us up to where we are. Our ancestors came over on ships and you know, and we're, we're, we're slaves and you end up with us, you know, a number of generations later. And it's just, it's bizarre to, to think that, that we are who we are because of them and also because of the people who have influenced us. I mean, I think about some of the black musicians who we grew up with or who we found. <clears throat> I was in the Moscow airport and was waiting, was going, playing some music with, uh, uh, with some, some people from high school on a trip and we were playing for orphanages and things like that. And I remember when, when we were in the airport, it was like an 11 hour layover. I was looking and there was these CDs and one of them was a, a John Coltrane CD and it was a, a Love Supreme. And I remember taking it and looking at the back and it was just three tracks. I started listening to it, started listening to it on the airplane and it just blew my mind, it just blew my mind. I mean, I started out playing the saxophone but to hear him play it the way he did, and just something as simple, it being called a love supreme, you could tell that there was so much emotion wrapped up in that instrument, and that was a real pivotal point for me in terms of music. You know, when I look back at musicians that I deeply respect who are black, especially when I think about drummers like you know, Al Jackson Jr., Clyde Stubblefield, like these funk cats where, you know, it's about so much about feel and when you talk about like Coltrane and being able to hear something special and something unique the experiences of your life come through when you play when you reach that level when you dig deep into that level and and those are universal right feelings it's, exactly which is what I think is is what broke the mold you know it, it, even when you go back to the 50s and you have black and white culture being so radically apart in America and that music was one of the main things that really brought that really bridged that gap and you have you have white people who hear the black music and they're like they're like oh my god this is really good especially the young people and they want to dance and they want to move and it just speaks to there being a deeper connection below the skin it's finding that I think that's so important for us and playing in scattered trees trying to find still that universal thing that, that even if we're not playing R&B, even if we're not playing hip hop, there's still a lot of influences that we draw uh, emotionally from. When we were driving down to play a show in Kentucky and getting stopped for no good reason at all, for no reason at all, getting stopped, pulled out of the car. When you're driving. Yeah, yeah. searched, you know, sprawled out on the car for no reason at all. But it's like once you step into that venue, once you step into that room, none of that matters. And, you know, we don't get questions, we don't get asked, you know, what's it like being a black guy that plays in an indie rock band or, you know, why don't you play hip hop or anything like that. And I think that's still, to me, it's beautiful because it's a sign of you know, continued progression and evolution. And it's one of the things that aggravates me the most is when people call certain music white music or certain music black music because it's like music is a thing that doesn't it's not supposed to have that attachment I mean you have certain social classes who listen to certain types of music but I don't like I don't like having sort of done the groundwork and taken the journey of expanding my musical palette you know yeah. and then being someone saying, oh, that's white music. The important thing is the way that the mu musician is digesting the music. I was just recently listening to, to uh, Richter, who's a white musician, I mean, old white musician, playing Beethoven, playing one of the piano sonatas. And I can listen to that, and then I can go and I can listen to Nina Simone playing the piano. Completely, you could say that's the difference between white music and black music. You could say Beethoven is white music and Nina Simone is black music. But they're both playing the piano. 
and they're both communicating to a different part of the soul, you could say. Feelings that I I never even saw you again in my heart. Because they both, they both hit, you know, and both of them are profoundly moving. And so, yeah, I don't like it when people say that a certain type of music is white music or black music. Music is music, and if it hits, it hits, you know. The beauty of like art and music and everything in general, like, you know, you don't look at a painting and be like, oh, that's that's a black. That's a good point. You know, yeah. It's just because the thematic elements are so much more overt in lyrics, at least. You know, that's the difference, and that's why it's easier and lazy people find it easier to just be able to classify that as like white music or black music. Right, right. Uh, it's interesting that music is a, a transcultural language that ignores what color you are, ignores, ignores all of that, all these preconceived ideas about whatever, and just says, this is a sound. And you either hear it or you don't. It either talks to you or it doesn't, you know? And so the key is being able to, learning how to listen and learning how to make your mind say, okay, maybe I'll give more time, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll put in the effort that is required to really hear something someone else is trying to say. That's at the heart of it. I mean, that's the beauty of music, is opening up yourself to someone else's voice, even if they're from, even if they're a different color, from a different culture, whatever, music, music transcends that. And I can appreciate and draw influence from all kinds of different artists. When I think of like a, like a Steve Jordan or even like a Questlove, you know, where it's like they're just out there working on tons of great records by tons of different people. When you listen to them talk about their influences or people they're digging right now, it doesn't have to be you know, their color, genre, whatever. That's not even an issue. It doesn't even come up in the conversation. Today, Unlike when it was when you've got, you know, James Brown dance around on the stage or, you know, Chuck Berry, when people looked at them like, that is a black guy entertaining me, dancing around, yeah. you know, it's something completely different nowadays where people can respect us because of our craft and our art and the value of your work, not simply saying I'm going to do something for my black, you know, community, but just for people for the world. Well, I think it's implicit, though. We're definitely not in a post-race America. I sure, mean, yeah, sure. Obama, Obama's president is black. You know, that's true. But we're definitely not in a stage in which blackness doesn't matter, you know? I mean, we're, we're in a place where black means something different. And it's about people like me and you who are trying to figure out exactly what that means in the music that we play, you know? Uh, so I think color does still matter. Uh, it just matters in a different way and I think as long as we keep our eyes on the work and keep doing the right work, keep making music that is special, then I think that we can we can respect our race. Because of whatever house you grew up in, because of who your parents are, because of who you grow up with, that's a situation that, that's a perspective, that's a you know, a place that no one else in the world can be except you. And because yeah. of that, that gives you, like I said, certain set of advantages, disadvantages, ideas, what have you. It just gives you a very unique place to be. And because I think, because you start in a very unique place, you can end up somewhere unique. And like you said, when we analyze leaders or great individuals as we see them to be great, it's about where they ended up and not necessarily where they started from. Yeah. I think it's really cool that you have black artists today who are trying to push their genres forward. You have Kanye West with his runaway video and w with his whole sort of new aesthetic. I think you have a lot of black artists who are trying, or you have a few rather, black artists who are trying to do that. And it's really interesting playing the music that we play to the audience that we play to. I mean, you, you could say that, yeah, a lot of the times it's uh, predominantly non-black audience who's listening to it but you got to look at like 
I've been listening to Lead Belly for a while now, and the music that he played is figuring into the licks that I write, the way that I try to connect with my music, and so, yeah, you could say you could say that we're we're playing to a non-black audience, but the music that we're playing comes from a thoroughly, often thoroughly black place. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. But no, I think it's a it's a good point when you talk about people pushing it forward like Kanye. I think you bring up. You know, the Andre 3000s, uh, Janelle Monae's, yeah. people who are, you know, starting to be able to come through the mainstream, but, you know, it is a unique unique place because of where they came from, but they're not staying within the constructs of what, you know, typically black people are expected to be in mainstream music or pop music. I think, you know, for us, and as we're writing with Scott Trees and the different projects that we do, you know, I think it was, uh, I think it was Charlie Parker, actually, who said, if you don't live it, it won't come out your horn. And, you know, it's all the more, all the more important, I think, for us to, you know, be able to sit and realize and recognize where we came from, because that's what gives us our own voice and our own personality as we're writing and, you know, making art. Uh, there's a line that Solomon Burke says. He says, uh, uh, none of us are free, none of us are free, none of us are free if one of us is in chains and none of us are free. And so I think until we as a black society get to the point where we recognize that opening your mind is not a bad thing, then uh, none of us will be free. But I think that, I think that slowly but surely, we're getting to that point. Yep. We are together. We are together.